How's it going, y'all? Ice Tails here, and we are back at Monster Hunter Rise. So, confession time. I did not put audio for this one. I had just gotten home from work. It was late. It was about like 9 p.m. I was tired, so I said, screw it. I'm just going to record because I want to play. So, I completed all the missions that aren't key missions, and now, for the video, I could just do the key missions. So that's what we're going to be focusing on on this one. Oh, by the way, we're fighting Keisu. And for anybody who doesn't know about Keisu, if you know, you know. So, yeah. Blank stare, Keizu. Alrighty, so here we go. Won't lie, this is the first time I've ever seen Keizu outside of Monster Hunter stories. And I was like, oh, this thing is nightmare fuel. <laughs> I'll try to find some little post commentary best I can, but for the most part, I'd rather you um, just see it as is. Unless I have something I really want to add, so yeah. I'm going to shut up now, and I'll let you enjoy the video. Also, enjoy this banging Keisu theme. Okay, so for the few people who are probably going to ask, the music is not broken. The thing is, Keisu is blind and deaf, so there is no music to play. That's the joke. But since I like you guys, we'll put on some music. <laughs> if I have to suffer through this whenever I fight Keisu, I will at least make you suffer partly. The thing can only really smell you. That's about it. So if you don't move... It won't even target you or do anything. It just minds its own business. It can walk right past you. Basically, this thing is the Xenomorph from uh, Alien. Yeah, it is basically that. It even reproduces the same way. <laughs> Freaky, right? 
But I'll add some music. Just know I tried everything in my power to get it in that net. It would not. It just would not. So I just, I gave up, all right? Just know I did try. And I, I was really bitter about that, man. But yeah, Keisu, freaking Xenomorph, creepy thing. None of the monsters actually scared me in Monster Hunter, but that Keisu was just off-putting. Like literally, you saw the veins in it when it was moving around, so yeah. Alrighty, next up we have Royal Ludroff, another monster I have no idea, it's a new one to me. I just figured, okay, maybe I'll go in with a different weapon considering the fact it's a water type. I mean, it said spongy in the title, so I was like, alright, I don't have anything electric? So I tried to see if I could find an electric weapon, and that wasn't the case. Come to find out, it's weak to fire. Let's just say fire gets you through the first half of this game very easy. I know it's like the most common one you can make, but Jesus, the amount of starting monsters that are weak to fire in this game is just crazy. But we're gonna let's get let's get into it. Miss 
main contender, Royal Ludroth. So this is my first time being in a flooded forest, and I saw these fish, and I'm still a little disappointed you can't hit them. I really thought you could hit these fish and get some kind of buff or reward, but no, you cannot. They just, they're just part of the scenery. You can't do anything to them, and I'm still upset about it. I'm so sad you couldn't hit those fish. And I just want to clarify, for anybody that is curious, I am collecting the little birds as we go along. I'm just cutting this part out of the video because if I did, it, if I didn't, it'd make them much longer. So yeah, I am collecting them on my way to get there. I just cut it out the video so it makes it more enjoyable. But all right, fight's about to start. Bye. So for anybody who doesn't know, one of my favorite things to do when I play Monster Hunter is I have to see if I can take the tail off. I have to see. Every time I fight a monster, I have to see if I can take the tail off. I can break anything else. I won't care. But if I can't break the tail off, I'm going to be sad. So that is like my main mission is to break the tail off. I just want the satisfaction. The fear satisfaction of breaking it off. So yeah, there's going to be oftentimes you see I'm going to go out of my way to get the tail. <laughs> Might lead to me dying, but I won it. Spongy Boy here wasn't that hard, but just that tail kept hitting me, and I was like, okay, this tail is doing more than he actually is. And there goes the tail. I didn't get the final hit, but it came off. I got my I got my wish. It came off. I really love the Palamute in this game. I really do. It's so useful and it helps you in combat. I <laughs> if it's not in the next monster, I'm gonna be sad. I really love these guys. I really love the doggos. No lie, watching this back, I thought I didn't get the tail, but the tail was the first thing I got. It's just I got a scale out of it. So yes, I did get the tail. Yes, I got the tail because I was going to be mad at myself if I didn't, but I got a scale out of it, not the tail. Which does happen, which makes no sense to me. I don't know how you, you're not guaranteed to get the tail if you cut it off, but I don't make the rules. I just play the game. I still didn't get the tail, but eh, it is what it is. All in all, not a bad monster. I completed it a lot faster than Keizu, so yeah. <laughs> Mm-hmm.
Venomous Commander, Great Wargi. I don't know if you remember that big orange thing I ran into in one of the previous videos. I was like, hey, what is this thing? Yeah, this is that thing. And I'll be honest, I did fight this thing already off camera during an expedition. So yeah, I'm familiar with it. Also, I changed up to the greatsword. I use dual blades and greatsword. I do use the charge blade, but I'm not very good with it. If you want to see me use the charge blade, let me know. I'll definitely, I'll definitely try to use the charge blade. Charge sword, be more accurate. But yeah, this guy, I already fought him. I knew, okay, he has poison, but just his poison is very annoying and he's fast. So not the smartest thing to use the greatsword. Yeah, yeah, I know. My my hitting is still bad. My depth perception is still garbage. But hey, I'm getting better at landing the sludge. Just getting the distance down is still weird for me, especially when it comes to the great sword. <laughs> Cause I wanted to do the one where you like smash straight down, but your dude literally comes straight down. I don't know who put that hole there, but they're wrong for it. I just went to get the bird. That was it. There was a bird down there. That's all I want to go get. Nothing more. So when I fight a monster, I try to capture it, 
especially the first time around, because when you capture it, you have a chance of getting the rarer items. The chance is much higher as opposed to killing it. You do lose out on certain items you can only get from killing it, so you have to pick and choose. I like capturing it, because when it comes to plates, you have a better chance of getting the plates if you capture them. So yeah, that's why I typically always try to capture them. It's a little harder. It takes a little bit longer sometimes, but the reward is worth it. Especially if you have the items on that make you increase your chances. But again, this fight wasn't too difficult, just probably the greatsword was not the best <laughs> weapon to use here. So when I got back, Fugin tells me about rampages. And the next thing I do is go through the tutorial section of how to do it. And let's just say it took me a long minute, so I'm gonna skip it. So this is another one of this game's gimmicks of this generation. Monster Hunter World had like the big tower defense kind of thing as well, where you had like the different stages that you had to defend against. I forgot what the big mountain monster was, but yeah, you had to defend against that. But yeah, this is this game's equivalent. So yeah, we're gonna skip the training and we're gonna get to when we get back into the action. Alrighty, and we're back. So yeah, basically, this is tower defense. But instead of a top-down view, you are in the action yourself. So basically, you're gonna defend against waves of monsters, each having their own different types. You have ground units who just do DPS. You have a blue, so you see the red icon? Those are DPS units. You have a blue icon, there are wall breakers. You'll want to take them out because if you don't, they'll break through all your defensive your defensive walls and then you lose. Then you also have aerial units who are just very freaking annoying. Of course, this is the tutorial mission. The first time you're doing a rampage, so it's not super hard. But yep, there you go. The green ones right there are aerial units. They can snipe you from a distance and they are very annoying. So the thing is, you'll want to complete certain challenges so you can increase your stronghold level. Doing so will give you access to more items that you can utilize to make your job a little bit less stressful. And let me tell you, the first time I did this, it was okay at first, but my god, it got stressful. Things can fall apart real quick doing this, let me tell you. So the next unit coming up is the one I was talking about earlier, the wall breaker. You definitely want to focus on taking these guys out because they make a beeline straight for your defenses. They're just going to go straight for the wall and break it. And that makes things much worse. So yeah, definitely involve us. Take these guys out. But I'm gonna start skipping through portions of this because it takes a long time since it's still part of the tutorial. So you don't have to sit through it like I did. I will say, these kind of missions you need to do with a friend, or friends, or just have anyone who can join. Because these missions suck, I don't like these. It's a lot to take in, and if you're not one of those people who can like micromanage, you will get overwhelmed real quick, real quick. So yeah, bring friends. Oh, 
No lie, even after it said first horde repelled, there is like no time to rest. I'm sitting here thinking about, okay, what else can I mess with? What can I reset back up? This, like I said, this is stressful if you're not good at micromanaging. And this is like the first time I'm doing this. I'm like, whoa, this is a lot to take in, Chief. You want me to know all of this? For the most part, I just try to put out, set auto units everywhere and just go from there. But yeah, man, I, it, this was rough. And then you're gonna tell me, oh, I have to do more of these? Joy. So the game had me set Fugen up right here. But as far as I'd recommend, set them up closer to where a gate is. That way, if they get back there, you can at least do major damage to the wall breakers. I also made the critical mistake of not knowing that you can reset your gings till later on. So like if they're damaged, it's better just to just take them down and put them back up. That way you can bypass having to have them completely destroyed and then setting them back up. Just take them down, put them back up. But if there's like some meta strat to doing this, please tell me. Is it easier just to set auto turrets, like set auto ones, and then just go kill it with your weapons? I have no idea, but I would really like to know if someone knows the best way to do this. I'm not going to survive much more of these. I know these are automated, but it's kind of annoying that it takes you off after every shot. I'm not doing that. Every time you shoot, it takes you off, which is kind of annoying, but I get it. It's automatic, so.
Yeah, as you can clearly see, I was not ready for this at all. I am struggling, going back and forth, back and forth. I managed, though. So like the game said, you have to kill the main threat or defend till the time runs out. Just kill the main threat. Make your life easier. But just make sure you kill any wall breakers. I I don't like these. I don't like these rampages. I... I might invite people to help me. Like, please just carry me through this so I don't have to do this. A friend of mine told me that, oh, you have to do these about three or five more times. What? I, I don't want to do these. I don't like these. Don't, please. I don't. But I know I have to do this at least two more times. At least. ミトゥトゥルイネヒクマガイマガドユクミドコリムアゲフェイクラデスリノスドラテユクミドハザトクールルタリレビザテムリレルサ遠くよもぎ。網もはし。シバルスとシーザ。ローリー。稲ひくやぎるかし。そし。トラグチトリ。ラデスートムハクデイポキラテトソシツイトリスーファドラニロメスゼラゲシゲアラクミデモラパオロッキーシュ Akunyuriki, Amorado Trawi, Gisero, Lukira Ofero. Nira, 
メトーレシートか I made it out with a B. I know you can get an S. That's the highest you can get. But hey, I'll take a B. A B is still passing. And it's not the worst grade you can get as a passing grade. I'm just happy I did it. I, I didn't care. I was like, it's done. I, I don't have to play this anymore. I can go back to actual Monster Hunter. I don't like this special event. I don't like Rampages. <laughs> I just don't. So, to summarize, I'm just gonna say it. When you do the Rampage quest, you get those tickets, and you can use those to upgrade your weapons to have certain effects. So, we're gonna wrap it up here. Like I said, I just wanted to play, and I did not record myself actually doing any in game, real time audio. But the next one will have it, I promise. So, until next time, Ice Tail signing off. Bye bye!